Right, gang, welcome back. Episode 7 is here already, and we have just got Rob back from a week in Spain. Yeah. Looking very tanned <laughs> for an Irish person. It's just a filter. It's just a filter of the light. <laughs> if you can make me more tanned while they're editing, that'd be good. So, you had a good time? Yeah, it was good. It was really good. Um, kind of didn't think about it until I was there. Like, I didn't... Yeah put much planning into it at all. It was, I was away for a, a friend was getting married. Mm. We decided to take a week uh, while we were over there. Um, it was lovely. I'd never done a holiday like that before where mm. there wasn't stuff to be doing or it wasn't like a city break or it wasn't like an activity based or it wasn't with your mate mm. like going out mm. all the time. It was, it was really, really nice just to chill out. Nice. And yeah, just yeah. step away from I things. Needed, it was so busy beforehand. Yeah. Like, if you didn't take that break, I'd say you'd be in hospital right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a funny thing, though, because I said it to you earlier, it was yeah. tough to settle into. It yeah. was tough to switch off yeah. straight away. It probably took about two or three days to, to get into it. Yeah, I don't know how many people are transparent about that, but, like, that's like me uh, as well. When yeah. I go on holidays, it just takes a few days just to... Yeah. Unwind. It's trying to, though, arrive at the holiday now is my goal. Mm not been in a state of being so wrecked that you yeah. need the holiday and that was something that you were nearly battling with you were saying yeah it's, that surprised me to be honest yeah you were like resisting the fact that you needed it yeah. but it's a good observation to say right i i okay i i don't want to be getting to the place where i need the holiday and yeah. that's something i said to you especially when for us we have kids is you have this expectation from years gone by that a holiday is you just go and you chill and it's all you and actually, holiday for us now is a time where we have to create experiences for the kids, mm. enjoy the time that we're there together with them, not just laze around all the time. And it plays into the whole narrative of like making sure you're not just burning yourself out the whole time to try mm. and get to the next thing, the next thing. Obviously, there's times in your life that are busier, but you yeah. know, you know yourself, it's it's not worth it. it. And it's been really good from our conversations, the chats um, that we had today already that that was a huge lesson for you mm. that oh my god we were talking about how busy you we were but it's like the busy fool sometimes yeah definitely the busy fool and <clears throat> you may be living a life you feel you want to live or doing a job you feel you want to do but mm. you can still build that false prison around yourself where you feel you become the busy fool and even when you're conscious of it like i'm very conscious of busy being a busy fool yeah you can still fall into that trap and it was it wasn't until i took the break i was like wow i actually just been built this false, false prison for myself and mm. just been in this grind mm. that i didn't even realize i was building until you step out well, it's because you went from the grind of the corporate world mm. coming out to avoid that yeah and then falling into that grind and it's like filling the space with yeah stuff to do instead of directed you know, work. Um, yeah. Now, at the same time, for where we are with Improve and the nature of this company is, mm. you know, like any company, you start out with without investments. Mm. You know, it's not the type of, you don't raise massive funding for yeah. these types of companies. Uh, you, you bootstrap it and you try and build it from there, which we've yeah. been doing really nicely. The only downside of that is you don't have that team around you where mm. you say, we just recorded some videos, you go and edit it now. Mm. Or, you know, you go post it. Yeah. We, you know, we do everything. Yeah. Essentially, is like, we literally do everything. Yeah. Uh, podcasts, YouTubes, um, editing, reels, posting. editing, socials, yeah. delivering to the clients, uh, you know, sales, yeah. marketing, the whole lot is, yeah. is all us. It's not a boo-hoo, it's just an understanding that at the same time, you know, you can't help but being burnt out sometimes and you have to kind of push through it, I guess. Yeah, it's an interesting. When you're an employee, you can go through busy periods and quiet periods. And when there's a quiet period, the onus isn't really on you a lot of the time to become busy. Yeah. Whereas yeah. when you're like us, and like you said, there's so many different hats you can be wearing, there's always something to be done. Yeah. So like, yeah. and the, the tough part can be any free time you have, you feel you should be doing something. Yeah. For the business. Yeah. Yeah. If something needs to be done, I have free time, I should be doing it. Mm. Whereas in reality, what probably serves the business most is, you know, I put in a good stint today and I'm going to take a rest yeah. for, the, for the few hours in the evening and I'm going to yeah. n not constantly fill my plate with something that needs to be done because 
especially when you're you know running a company or directing the ship in any way you can always make yourself busier if you want, yeah if you want yeah. if there's free time there it it, it will take it um, and do you think from your perspective from management managing teams in the corporate world mm. do you think although it's not the people's like own businesses and stuff like that do you still mm. find that that happens or is it just so yeah busy and has to be productive that like you're still working loads but it's all productive uh, yeah. within there you know like what's the difference i guess like it happens everywhere like you get you get you get workaholics yeah you know what I mean? people who just are happy to work and be busy and feel busy and happy yeah sorry yeah happy yeah um and their identity is that and there's yeah. nothing else in their life and it is that sort of thing if if you give more it will take as well but there, yes th- there is also that thing you find like of any big company that becomes massive that thing like, middle management layer becomes so inflated yeah, and yeah you can sort of if you want to you can hide out in there yeah uh, yeah, as, yeah as well so it's as much as you want to give or take um, yeah i know what you mean but yeah the more the more you're willing to give company will gladly take it yeah and that's a good, good perspective uh, on it isn't it yeah but it's funny because you can see it a lot clearer in that world but then when you're the one running the company the lines get blurred a lot more so yeah yeah there's a distinct separation a lot of times between work and personal life whereas sometimes when you're you know the owner or you're running things it, the lines can blur yeah and sometimes home life becomes work life and oh 100 and it, it, it doesn't it's not like one day you suddenly are working 14, 15 hours. It's, it creeps in. It's like, oh, I have an hour in the evening, I'll open the laptop. Oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, I'll be working this evening, I'll do a couple of bits while I'm on. And it just slowly snowballs and then you come to a point where you're like, actually, I haven't had any free time the last two or three days because I've just yeah. literally been working. Yeah, well, with you away last week and with a couple of other life uh, events and different things that are on, yeah. I literally... We're going away, obviously, next week, which mm. is great. But, like, it just seemed to be one big snowball effect. And, lo- yeah. you know, in many senses, because of the kids and, you know, Bodie's off school and whatever else, is it's more limiting. But it means that I'm jumping on at ex- obscure hours to try and get yeah. some stuff over the line. And, you know, the busy fuel was really coming up. And mm. I was beginning to feel so kind of like, oh, what, you know, what's the point you were doing things for the sake of it and mm. and when you really should have just said no nope, not able for that right now we're gonna have to just park that a little bit um no yeah. it's all a learning curve it is it's a great learning curve um and happy to push through those things a lot of the time yeah but at the same time like you said before you know it you've put in like i start work at 6 30 in the morning with clients you know it, it could be 10 o'clock and you're still trying to get something done you're like mm. i should be in bed now yeah you know now in saying that i'm not usually like that i'm pretty good at like parking it about yeah, yeah. you know like 100 percent parked you know before dinner sort of thing yeah, that's yeah. usually i'm rare i'm less than you are about going on the laptop in the night time because mm. i don't have the ability to yeah at the same time when you're away and, and there was needs most like i would jump on i would mm. do it then but that's when you're like mm, would i do this for someone else yeah probably not yeah i think you become resentful of it when you're doing it for someone else yeah because yeah, it's true. just my time it's my personal time whereas when it's your personal time you're doing it for yourself you, the lines can get blurred a bit mm. and like that that was just the the learning for me of how it can just creep in and just something for me now going forward over the next couple of months is just to keep an eye on that yeah um, and yeah. to not let that get to that point again well the difference in you now compared to before the whole oh, is yeah. huge difference and it's just you going oh my god i was living life a bit more again yeah, exactly. Just remembering to live life. That we just get caught in the hamster wheel. You're not living life. Yeah. I think that's what most of the time people are afraid of having nothing to do. Yeah. But very quickly, like, if you just started living day-to-day life, uh, you weren't worried about finances, for example, yeah. you'd be finding stuff to do. Sure, what do we all do growing up? Like, that's yeah. that was life, was just playing, having fun, not caring about exactly. those things, you know? Um, and I think, again, for me, the I'm very aware of, the hamster wheel that a lot of people find themselves on mm. but then even if you're aware of it doesn't mean you're not building your own one in, in yeah no 100 you know? yeah yeah definitely um it's yeah you can have all the 
the thoughts you want about wanting to live a balanced life and mm. work life balance and all and you do find moments of it but it's very hard to keep that consistent yeah. that's but that's sort of the goal but i yeah. you know and i still believe that there's that element of in the early days of things you just have to give that extra bit and yeah. the goal is to get it there and it's not that kind of oh when i get there it's it's not that it's like sometimes things just need extra time but with the end goal being that you're not that person who's stuck on your own hamster wheel it doesn't mm-hmm. matter whose it is but if it's your own that's not my goal when i'm setting up a company or you know a, a, a project in life or whatever else is i want to be able to do that but also live a balanced life and yeah. be able to you know so having that stress-free not stress-free i mean you know that's the best way of looking at it. the goal will always be to evolve something bigger and bigger but be able to step back from it mm. in my opinion and yeah. in the early days obviously you can't do that too soon yeah there's there's an element of getting momentum you know putting energy into something to give it momentum yeah but in the hopes of that it starts to yeah. become self-sustaining and you don't need to put as much into it to keep it going yeah it is it's kind of like what's coming to me and in, in a funny way is like jujitsu where mm. you get in as a white belt and there's just so much to do there's just so much you can learn it's like an endless process of like every training session is going to be mind-blowing it's going to be exhausting because you have people yeah. killing you and you there's nothing to it but to do it you just have to put yourself in there and you're going to have to get through it and then as you get better okay it's not as much of an emotional physical investment as i go down there every time i'm not wreck because i'm a blue belt now and i can hold my own a little bit purple belt oh, okay now i'm starting to choose my rounds and i'm kind of feeling it out here feeling good brown okay now i can mostly dictate my training sessions a couple of harder rounds and now for me um the black belt is is nothing to do really necessarily with the belt itself but the process whereby i will go down to most training sessions Yes, there's people that give me a hard time. And then there's some people who I don't get to train with as frequently that really fucking give me a hard time. But they're they're infrequent. So mm-hmm. for like 80% of my training, I'm training with someone that is not as good as me. Yeah. Which is great because I can go down and now I can just, you know, go down. I, I say it's great. It's great to do both. But at the moment, I can go down and it's not too full on. Almost to the point where if it was a business and you've grown and established it, and you've put in all the, the, the work, you're now getting the fruits of your labor, rather than, you know, it being the opposite, is you build this big business, and you're still trapped inside it. Yeah. You know, if you follow the jiu-jitsu, or the, the belting system, that really, by the time you get the black belt, your training should be a lot less taxing than someone else's, especially if you're not trying to get ready for the black belt worlds. Or So, you know what I mean? It's... And that's what for me I want from life is like to have put in so much hard work to the point um, that you can now live with the, the fruits of your labor, yeah, shall I say. Like Short term pain for a long term gain. Yeah. yeah. Rather than when I get here, I'll be happy. Oh, yeah. You know, because genuinely now with my, my jiu jitsu, I love to get better all the time and, and, yeah. and progress. But like, I'm quite content where I am. Mm. So now I can go down and enjoy it. I'm content and whatever else. Whereas if you go back to the business perspective and it's just the next big thing, the next big thing, that's I don't I don't like living like yeah, that. It's a dangerous mindset to have of like when I get here, everything will be fine. Yeah. Because on the way to here, it gets further and further away. You keep pushing it out or adding more. You, you, it's sometimes just taking the step back and being like, no, I'm actually here now. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and what that looks like from a business perspective. Yeah. Well, if you go back to the busy fuel part of us at the moment, mm. we'll, I think, being very honest, transparent and honest is we know the larger potential for improve. Mm. And it's trying to package that up and, and share with people what we have to share with them. Yeah. Um, and almost have it at different levels so that nobody's left out. It's not the exclusive club. It's more just where are you on your journey mm. and where can we help you? with your journey and there'll be different levels to that and it goes back to that whole like the physical uh exercise almost being that entry level mm. into the next step is like okay physical exercise let's just make sure you're ticking the box with that okay from there what can we start working on is it your mindset is it mm. you know your mindfulness all of those things and how do you just 
keep growing to become a better version of yourself yep. until you get to that point where now it's nearly your turn to start sharing that with other people. Yes. And that's the kind of, again, a jujitsu analogy, you know, your white belt is like your entry level, very physical, it's very much a physical thing. Mm. Blue belt to start becoming more methodical, purple belt, a little bit more mindset, brown and black. Finally, by the time you get to the black belt, yeah, you've got, it's a whole new journey again, but now it's also a journey of sharing Mm -hmm. what you've you've dealt with yeah up until now yeah exactly and that you are people recognize the journey you've been through yeah you know because that's a lot of times like what that black belt represents is that experience level that you have and that you know place of authority Mm. to be able to give knowledge to people or to be able to share experiences with people so yeah again yeah just applying that to the other parts of life we often we often forget to learn from those ahead of us sometimes yeah or that People have been there and done that mm-hmm. in various aspects of life and all, all aspects of life. Yeah. Sometimes we just feel like, oh, I'm the first person to ever experience something like this. Yeah, or, yeah. I'm the only one that has all this hardship and everyone else has it figured out. Everyone feels that everyone, in their own way. You know? yeah, yeah. But there's, there's no reason why you can't look ahead and learn from others. Yeah. And the, the thing that we always talk about is the... <clears throat> the different steps so what step you're on and yeah. people get caught up especially when they come into something like for example when i started training people i thought i needed to know every single piece of knowledge out yeah. there and i went to pursuit of learning as much knowledge as i could back to college master's degrees like all this kind of stuff to get to a point where you realize that the people that i work with at the moment and have chosen to work with are they don't need level 10 information mm. they need you're, you're talking about okay being comfortable being at like step six seven eight wherever it mm. might be uh but being able to still be relatable to someone on step two three four one two three you know yeah because sometimes when you're let's again use the sign the strength condition scientific based thing if you have someone at like a level 10 and they're all knowledge they have a little bit of communication skills or whatever They've got someone who's entry level, level one, never exercised in their life. They come in and they just can't stop spitting all of this garbage to them. It's not garbage, it's great knowledge. It doesn't do anything for that person. And actually realizing then the person on step three who's starting off their training journey going, I can be so helpful to this person. I may not have the knowledge to go into, you know, division one football or something like this and, and help those people right now. But like they're the one percent. There's you know, let's just give a good chunk of people, like eighty percent of people that someone on step three could help on step one. Yeah. Do you know that sort of way? Yeah. And that I think we all fall into that as like, oh, I don't know if I can help people with that. You're like, Of course you can. Yeah. You it's, know? It's funny how 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 many things just distill down to some basic principles and how quickly we forget those. So yeah. if you take say take exercise or take jujitsu. Like when you first start off, a lot of the times the goal is like, let's just build a routine. Yeah. Like, let's just commit to being here in this place for mm. a certain amount of time, X amount of times per week. Mm. And say for me at the moment, so say if I take jujitsu for myself at the moment, life's been so crazy over the last couple of weeks, training sort of gone all over the place. So mm. rather than me trying to focus on something complicated right now, I need to take it right back to the first principles and be mm. like, I just need to get my routine back in order again Mm. and then everything will build from there rather than like just just accepting that i'm not going to be able to work on some complicated thing at the moment or get these the rounds i need in or whatever like i need to come back and be like okay we're back now the next couple Mm. of weeks aren't as busy let's just get the routine back Mm. and then i'll get that back and then i can go from there yeah it's like coming back and forth it's not it doesn't always have to be so progressive like the progressive part can actually be stripping it back to be be less progressive yeah it's kind of like for me at the moment i just felt in the last few weeks i felt for ages jiu-jitsu was just really flowing nicely and i was learning loads of stuff yeah and in the last few weeks like i hurt my back Mm. uh, in the gym and i it wasn't too bad or anything like that was more hip flex related and that kind of made me a little bit more tentative on the mats and especially I'm trying to train with as many big guys as I can and I want to be able to, I want to take them down and become, you know, take top position against a bigger person if I can. Far, far more likely to 
beat them. And especially with my game now, if I can get a bigger person on their back, the likelihood is I it'll be a win-win for me. If they get me on my back, even if I have a good guard, a relatively good guard, these people are so big, it can be hard to yeah. move them. Um, but what was happening then, I think, was because I was more tentative on the feet. I was playing a little bit more guard. And overall, the feeling was just like, oh, I'm kind of a little bit static. But that was just paired with such a busy time period and all that stuff. And I, I should have removed myself from saying, Austin, okay, you've been feeling great and everything's been going well. That That's brilliant. But it's a little bit different right now. The last mm. few weeks have been very different in your life. Uh, you should be happy that you're just going. Yeah. Routine. Yeah. And that can be, but that can be frustrating when you're used to, you know, being at a certain level <clears throat> yeah. and then just being okay with, okay, well, the fact is now I just need to be okay with just getting it in yeah. or just being there. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But it, that's oftentimes where you need the likes of a coach or a mentor to bring you back to that. Because yeah. otherwise you go into that spiral of, oh, I was working on this thing and now, now this, and you just become resentful of everything that's cropping up in life. Whereas yeah. if you just sit back and accept, you know, there's like a busy wave coming now mm. and I, what's good for me is to just take the box in mm. terms of being there and turning up. It's actually, it's, it's reminding me now because I put, I think it was today, I put up a story, there's a couple of yeah. the check-in responses and I said, I'm going to put Lindsay's actually on me to do this, put more of them up because I read them every week. I'm like, oh my God, this is so nice to hear. Yeah. And actually more people need to see that. They see how people are really loving, mm. you know, this this service. Um, but one of the guys, I even the one that I put up and it was kind of just based on like he had missed a week training and he's really consistent. But at the same time, he's never felt better at jiu-jitsu or never felt more kind of bulletproof, strong like resilient all of that felt amazing even though yeah he just missed a week but that same person what i say to him is the reason he missed a week nearly was it just things were getting on top of him nearly his busy time in work mm. is the summer yeah and he's flat to the mat and the problem was he was trying to keep the same intensity he was lifting that he had in the quiet time of his his work and then that was just wearing him out and eventually it just comes to that point where that one week he like needed it off it was mm. perfect I didn't have a problem with it but I'm sure he was like oh can't believe I missed it we've had a conversation I'm like listen while you're on busy season you're so consistent and you can see the one week off certainly doesn't affect your results mm. you're so consistent you're feeling amazing we need to just take this period each year and actually say no this is more like a tick the box mm. this is a maintenance phase nearly there will be growth and progression in it don't get me wrong but not with that attitude of starting a program at 90 percent of where you want to be and then you know dying for the last few weeks and he started a new program there and i said look just open up week one at something that you know 100 percent it's going to be totally fine get your movement patterns down figure out what it feels like to do to bet the both of them start kind of planning what it is that you might be able to um hit on these week two up a little bit and maybe only weeks three and four particularly week four is going to be quite challenging for you but in a busy period of work if you know that that's only wrapping around every three to four weeks mm -hmm. much more manageable than this idea of trying to do everything busy work busy everything yeah it's okay to strip it back and it's the don't let perfect be the enemy of good exactly that's, that's it that's the beauty of having someone to say that to you oh because i know if you're yeah in your own devices you'll like I found even being away for a week there, I didn't get to the gym just because of the nature of the week. It was just a busy week. Oh, not, not busy as in work busy, fun busy, but just in the gym, yeah. the team kind of went out. But yeah. part of me did feel like I needed that. And I know yeah, yeah, you did. I don't need to, I don't need to jump back in at 90% of where no. it was. Like it's a matter of easing back into it. Absolutely. But again, you need someone to tell you that, or you need to be able to... Mm. Because I was getting in my head of like, oh, I've missed the gym now. I'm just going to be a mess. I'm going to come back and I've lost everything and I'll be square one again. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, if you someone asked you, would they take the week off? You're like, yeah. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Um, but you're right, though. That is, and I, I've been putting it on the Instagram recently and I really mean it. There's a difference between someone who counts your reps and there's someone who actually is your coach. Yeah. 
coach looks at, it's a holistic approach mm. and sometimes even reminding myself that that's exactly what i am with my with people i've said it for years it's like if people especially my one-to-ones if it was purely based on just exercise they'd, they'd have been changing hands all the time yeah. i don't i'm very lucky in the sense that I have the same clients for years. I have new people, about 20% of people where I get people in and, you know, new people, but not anymore. I don't take any new people on. Mm. But, you know, there would always be that. But the consistency is because I'm holding them accountable for their whole life. Yeah. I'm not trying to run their business for them. Yeah. I'm not trying to run their family for them. But what I'm doing is saying, right, tell me what's getting in the way. Mm. How can we monitor this? Whether it be adjusting your food, yeah. whether it be adjusting your training, more, less, you know, et cetera, et cetera. That is so, so valuable. It's underrated how valuable a good coach is. Yeah. And for me to be able to say that to that person I was talking about, like one of the improved clients, is if he didn't have me there, that week could have turned into two, three, four. Mm-hmm. Then he really is starting to go. I come back, oh, I feel like crap. Yeah. Oh, fuck it. And, it, you know, this cycle continues. Instead, you just have someone to say, X person, this is okay. Yeah. Totally fine. Don't worry about it. Move on. Yeah. Okay, I'll move on. So you move on. And then again, it's another six months down the line. Something happens. They're like, oh, you have something to keep you on straight and narrow. All of a sudden, you're a couple of years deep. You're like, wow, remember where I started? Like, you're a prime example. Yeah. You're a yeah, prime yeah. example, you know? So you have someone who comes into you. You had that original goal. You knew it was going to take time and commitment. And, you know, years later, you've just stayed committed to that goal, whether slight highs and lows but for the most part consistently progressing the whole time yeah yeah it's mad it just all like you said the years suddenly it becomes years and years and you you've been doing it and then it just becomes the non-negotiable that we talk about you just have to do it yeah yeah the non-negotiable yeah. thing that we talk about all the time of just now for, forgetting sometimes as we have to remind ourselves all the time forgetting that the there's a lot of people out there that there is no, they don't have, they haven't built a non-negotiable yet. Yeah. So just to build a non-negotiable of lifting weights or even going to jujitsu X amount of times a week, that's huge for them. Yeah. For us, it's a non-negotiable. It's just built into our week. But that's the lovely side of like, build that into your week and that become a non-negotiable and a habit. Now what can you add? Mm-hmm. How can you keep becoming the best yeah. version of yourself? And then you start to get addicted to it. It's the addiction of yeah. adding stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just tell them, tell them your real vice, Rob. What are you addicted to? <laughs> Smoking cigarettes with papers made out of fucking some health, self-help book, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gang. So that is the end of this week's episode. We were, you know, making sure Rob came back and not getting too much work on his plate once he came in. So we said we wouldn't go uh, super long on this one, but we're staying consistent. Uh, we won't be posting next week for the first time and it's really good for myself and Rob because we tie ourselves into these goals like every week, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes it's not um, the best thing to do. Mm. And actually seeing that and recognizing it and saying, no, it's time for me to take a break next week to reflect on stuff, to come back energized like you have. And we've been putting so much work into improve behind the scenes. And now it's time to really get clear on, uh, uh, you know, and benefit from the fruits of our, our labor really or get the fruits of our labor and we've been working on loads of things behind the scenes and we're getting really excited to to finalize it and what we've been working on is ways to get more people and make this available to more people make this service let us help more people and how do we go about that and at the moment where we started we had one main thing that we wanted to do and focus on and how we would approach it and that will still be there it will still be part a big part of the service that we offer but we're going to add more and more and that will continue as time goes anyway yeah that's the plan so next week no podcast time to reflect from both of us and to come back super energized and ready for the next uh, quarter shall i say really yeah. and you'll see what it comes Looking forward to it great to have rob back <laughs> finally stuck here on my own <laughs> and uh i'll leave you to yourself now for the next week so yeah. <laughs> don't blow up the company <laughs> <laughs> dumpster fire when you come back <laughs> yeah yeah hey rob how's it going 
Where is Rob? Oh, it went so bad so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Won't we? <laughs> anyway, so look, we call it there. Thanks again for listening. Subscribe, like, do all of those things for the algorithm gods. And we'll be speaking to you. This is a little bit later in the week that it's released. So we'll tide you over until, you know, midway through a week and a half from now. Yeah. All right. Brilliant. Talk to you soon, gang. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>